These are my indoor ecosystems. Each one of them is inhabited by some very unique creatures as well as plants and microorganisms. All of them working in perfect harmony means that there is minimal maintenance for me. All of my setups are bioactive, meaning there's microorganisms in the soil that eat decaying plant and animal matter. There's also springtails as well as purple dwarf isopods in all of my setups that eat any of potential mold breakouts. I have a thriving colony of springtails in one of my enclosed bottle ecosystems. It consists of both white tropical and orange springtails both of which make a great snack for my poison dart frogs, but they also do a great job in cleaning up mold breakouts and eating decaying plant and animal matter. They are essentially the goat species of animal to put in your terrarium because without it, it'll mold over and just look and smell disgusting. The orange springtails in particularly will seek out proteins, which makes them a great addition to my vampire crab since I sprinkle fish food all throughout it to feed them and they often miss some. And they also are a great snack for poison dart frogs. Sherry shrimp are the water version of the springtails in that they have nice colors, but more importantly, keep the water clean. Sometimes I'll slice a piece of cucumber into the water for them since they really seem to love it. And this also doubles as a beneficiary since it attracts bladder snails. Bladder snails are a nuisance since they compete with the shrimp for the microfilm. But luckily they love cucumbers so I always snatch it out of there after a couple hours and feed it to my tortoises who love snails even more than the snails love the cucumber. I've had my vampire crabs in my ecosystem which has been established for about 8 months now and I'm happy to report that I found the first baby molten crab shell about a week and a half ago. I kept my eye on the spot where I'd seen it and sure enough I found the culprit and then I kept looking around and I started to find all sorts of baby vampire crabs which is exciting news to say the least. I found especially many of them hanging out in the meandering river towards the top of my terrarium, but they gotta be careful though because it's one of the favorite spots for their mom and dad as well as the other adult vampire crabs who, unfortunately for them, see them as a potential snack, so it's best to stay out of sight. My vampire crabs aren't the only ones that have been busy laying and making babies though. My Rani Tamea Fantastica True Nominal poison dart frogs have been laying eggs on the glass. Once the embryos develop in the tadpoles, the dad frog will come by and give them a piggyback ride to a watering hole where the tadpole will develop, but they gotta be careful. It's a dog eat dog world out there and smaller tadpoles can fall victim to the larger ones, so they always gotta keep an eye out. Apart from trying to eat each other, they'll also eat microfilm as well as any unfortunate bugs that fall in the water. I also sprinkle in some fish food to help try to keep them from eating each other. Once the legs are developed, they'll hang out towards the water's edge and slowly absorb their tail before making their way out of water and they start to learn to slowly hunt the microfauna. Springtails and other small insects will also be on the menu until they grow a little bit and start to attempt to eat the flightless fruit flies, like this little guy right here learning how to hunt. He'll figure it out eventually. Poison dart frogs require fruit flies on the daily, so keeping up with their colonies can be kind of challenging at first until you get a good routine. Since poison dart frogs eat a wide variety of different insects in nature, it's important to supplement their diet with different supplements and calcium.
My trio of Tinctorius Azurus poison dart frogs are especially ravenous eaters and require many, many flightless fruit flies on the daily. A unique hunting strategy employed by all poison dart frogs is toe tapping. The vibrations sent out by the toes work in a similar way to that of the woodpecker, encouraging the insects out towards the surface of the leaf litter where they then get ambushed and meet their fate. One of the best ways to catch flightless fruit flies is preventing them from escaping in the first place. And an easy way to do that is by placing a piece of banana in the terrarium, encouraging them to flock to one destination rather than trying to attempt to escape and finding food somewhere else in your home. Having all the flies in one spot means the frogs will have an easier time finding the leftover flies as well. If you know you're going to be on vacation, you can time it right and leave the banana in there and put extra flies in to ensure they lay eggs and you'll be left with thousands of larvae that the frogs will eat while you're gone. Something that I like to do for my frogs about once a month is give them a clay mineral bath. Frogs actually absorb minerals through their skin and this is packed full of the trace ones that they require. Apart it being beneficial for the frogs, it's also important for the rest of the environment of the terrarium ecosystem, so I always leave the excess in there. And it also looks really cool in my Tinctorius Azurus poison dart frog terrarium since there's this impression that I put it in that makes it look like a natural mud pit. My frogs prefer to eat their flightless fruit flies in their spa. Yeah, they're kind of spoiled. One of the favorite things to eat for the sherry shrimp living inside of my vampire crab polydarium is the algae that builds up on the glass. The best way to get it off of there for them is to use a high quality razor blade. Emphasis on high quality because you want to make sure that it's nice and sharp so you don't scratch the glass. They literally can't wait to swarm this stuff. Almost as soon as it's off of the glass, the first shrimp are already on it. Pardon me, sir. Clean glass and my cherry shrimp living their best life eating algae. If you want to learn how to build your very own bioactive indoor ecosystem, check out my channel. I've got lots of videos of in-depth guides on how to build these very exact terrariums featured in this video. Also keep an eye out for future builds like this one that I'm just now completing. Paying for these terrariums is expensive and I'm thugging on a budget, so help me out with the algorithm and drop me a like, subscribe, and a comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks and have a good one.